I've hit the stream. I'm not sure if it's live. Oh, yes, I've just seen it. We are live. Hello, coders. Um, last night I did a, a stream, or yesterday I did a stream on YouTube, and we were working through the the uh, free code camp course that I'm I'm currently developing. It's uh, an object orientated course um, for PHP, and you know, I'm kind of working through the ideas a little bit and uh, I decided to do a little bit more today. I've actually done quite a fair amount uh, today uh, and I'm going to do a stream, this stream, to discuss uh, my thinking process um, around the application that we're doing. First things first though, what I need to do, let me just uh, bear with me a second, is I do need to fire off this tweet. Uh, da -da -da -da. Just saying that I am live coding. Boom. Off we go. <coughs> so I do apologize. I have a bit of a cold. Um, hence the coughing. I've uh, I, Last time I was doing, I was on Twitch, I was doing a, a thing called Coffee and Code, where... Um, I was doing some live coding, having a coffee, and it it, uh, it was good. It was good, but uh, unfortunately, time and, and so forth and other things got in the way. Um, so uh, I kind of dropped that, went back to YouTube. YouTube's um, really uh, going well. I've got a podcast as well every Friday. Um, but for this particular project, um, I thought it would be a good idea to do it over Twitch because it's more ad hoc. Um, I did a stream l yesterday. I don't really want to do a stream uh, and, and bother every YouTuber, uh, every YouTube account um, <clears throat> every day. So I'm going to do this on Twitch. I'm going to continue on uh, this project on Twitch. And then what I'm going to do is archive this to the YouTube channel. So anyway, anyway, let's, let's uh, get started. <coughs> Let me just grab a drink. Okay, hello coders. Today what we're going to do is we're going to work through the object oriented programming course that I'm building for Free Code Camp. Now, this is a PHP object oriented course and I've done an object oriented course before um, on the How to Code Well uh, YouTube channel. However, um, that was just teaching the fundamentals, the basics, uh, of object orientation without any kind of example, um, any kind of application. And this is what um, this course is is going to do. I put out a tweet, <coughs> excuse me, on the How to Code Well Twitter account um, last week, and I asked what kind of application I should be building. And um, the choices, I believe, were a to-do app, a... Um, a note-taking app and an invoicing app. I also asked this on a, a community tab poll on YouTube as well. And there is still, <coughs> excuse me, there is still uh, time to vote. So if you haven't done so already, please do follow uh, the How to Go Well on Twitter and, and put your vote in. There's also an opportunity to add your own suggestion as well. <coughs> excuse me. And um, yeah, so... The, the, the application that's winning at the moment is an invoicing app. I think there's like three days left to, to, to vote. So I, I really don't want to write down a load of code specifically for the invoicing app, just in case we have a, a tide of people who, who decide that we want to be doing something else, like a to-do app or a note-taking app or, or what have you. So um, last yesterday what I was doing is I was building the, um, the, the, the structure of the site. Um, it's a very basic structure. <laughs> and it, it's a basic structure of a site that any program could use, right? So regardless of what the three, op what option of those three um, have been chosen. So, however, as you can see on the screen, there is a class called invoice, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So what I'm going to do is just go over to the uh, the code here. <coughs> <clears throat> now, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start a a, uh, a talk from scratch, right, as to how I how I 
think this might be implemented. And I, I should say that this is very ad hoc. If you ever watch any of my courses, um, any of my tutorials, then, um, you know, it, 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 those are, are proper thought through. This, I want to sort of do it ad hoc and, and demonstrate my thought process as I am coding. So, yes, it's going to be in Docker. Uh, so this is what we did yesterday. We built a Docker Compose file. Um, it's going to have uh, my SQL or uh, my, yeah, my SQL. And um, we're going to be running the PHP 7.3 Apache stretch uh, container as well as the my uh, SQ, my SQL uh, 5.7, which will be upgraded soon. However, there is some things that I need, need to faff about with in terms of the uh, the, 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 the changes for my C, my SQL um, 8. But for now, we're just running uh, MySQL 5.7. And we, we haven't even got to the point yet of making a connection to the database. So um, I'm not too worried about that in this stream, but I just wanted to show you how the layout of all these containers work. <coughs> um, we've also got the, um, the, the, the bind mounts here, the volumes. So we're bind mounting um, the current working directory into var wub, 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 um, HTML. <coughs> and we're set setting the, the uh, document Apache document root to all of those things and then public. Um, so the document root is in here. Fine, okay, so there is, one would assume, an index file in there. That's good. Okay, so um, we're also uh, faffing about a little bit with the vhost. So that's in Apache conf and this is the vhost. So I did this because um, if I go back to the compose file, you have to alter the uh, document root in the vhost because you've changed because I've changed the um, the environment variable here to be public rather than the default, which is just into HTML. <coughs> okay, so that was a bit of a whistle stop sort of tour as to how things were all sort of flowing and and, and set up. That was basically where it was left uh, yesterday. However, actually, we also did in assets, was it in assets? No, in views, we had some templates and I, I was building some templates out. But the, the, the real thing that has changed uh, today is that we, we or I, I started working through the, the, the class structure in SRC. Now I can see right away that there's an error here. This here is in, can you see that's like a yellow color? So I've got a feeling, I was having a look earlier, that my git ignore, my git ignore there's a problem. I need to change that to be um, uh, a symbol like that. Press exclamation mark, that's what I'm looking for. <coughs> okay, so because that, that means that um, uh, the Git's keeps are not ignored. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, tomorrow morning when I'm um, commuting to, to my work, I will probably be working through some of this on my laptop. And um, if you don't have your Git keep and if you don't um, not ignore it, that's wrong English, but if you, if you don't have this in your Git ignore file, then the directories that are empty, so for example, um, this one, won't have, um, won't be there because you can't commit empty directories. So what you do is you put in a git keep or a file um, and then you use um, a, a, an exclamation mark like so. Okay, okay. <coughs> cool, right, okay, so, so, um, so, uh, entity form helper repository. Basically, the SRC folder was completely empty yesterday. This is what I was working on today, um, and um, uh, yeah. So let me. I tell you what. Let's let's walk um, walk through my thinking as to how this is going to be set up. So the first of all, I should say is this is not going to have any frameworks and a very limited amount of libraries uh, because I want to be this course I want to be teaching um, the fundamentals of object orientation through the 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 sort of concept of building this application um, and I don't want to rely on something else I, I want to teach as much as I possibly can do um, about all the ins and outs of writing classes inheritance um, solid principles um, auto loading basically everything to do with object orientation programming in PHP. And I, I feel 
that yes, I could use a framework like uh, Slim PHP or or uh, Symfony even or, or Cake PHP or what have you, uh, Laravel. <coughs> but it it it, it, would, it would remove the it would remove the need to know and be aware of some of the object orientated stuff. Um, I do realize, I do appreciate that this is a massive challenge for me, um, just because, you know, I am literally reinventing the wheel here. And the way I've been working is, is I'm kind of building, by accident, a framework. Um, and one thing I definitely want to stress is that this is not production ready, uh, and it, it won't be. This is just a learning resource. Um, as to when this course is going to be available, I don't know. I'm not actually going to be teaching the course in these streams, obviously not. I'm just going to be building this application. And then what I intend to do is once I'm comfortable with how this application works, I'm going to start removing certain files and then building those files again whilst I'm actually doing, uh, whilst I'm doing the lecture, whilst I'm actually talking about it. Um, Right now, I'm in this sort of state where I don't actually know how everything's going to be slotting together. So, and I don't want in the course to just suddenly go in one direction and, and then sort of like dismiss that because, you know, my thinking had changed and go into another direction. That's the whole point of writing this, this, um, this uh, application and doing it through Twitch because I want to show my thinking as I go ahead. Anyway, whatever. Let's just crack on. <coughs> Ugh, my cold is annoying. So the way I'm thinking is that um, we go to public and we get to the index.php. Um, and we can see that we have uh, a, a use and import statement here. Um, let me just comment out a couple of things and we'll, we'll sort of step through how I've done stuff. So we'll comment all that out and hit save. I will also run the Docker machine um, that I set up. So I'm just gonna do that now. So Docker start. So I did all this yesterday, you know, creating the machine, creating the composer, installing the, um, uh, you know, Docker compose, installing the images, the Docker images, um, and so forth. So hopefully this will just uh, work out of the box, I hope. I also built this, um, fancy pants readme file um, which is you know just basic installation stuff so I'm hoping that will uh, that machine will just build hopefully it's always a bit nerve-wracking when these things take time excellent okay <coughs> so now <coughs> so now I should be able to whoops um, just continue on with all of this stuff so we can do a Docker machine ENV, and actually it's in my history here. So I could do an eval, and then I could do a Docker uh, PS hyphen A, blah, blah, blah. And we have these two here. Um, they have both exited. So what I can do is I can just go and do a Docker compose up and let's just see their status. So I know that the, um, the MySQL will exit because I haven't actually configured that yet. I need to put in the environment variables for like the root password and the data database name and, and so forth. Uh, the one I'm worried about though at the moment is this this um, bad boy. Um, and I do apologize, my <laughs> I don't usually use the terminal in PHP Storm. Um, I usually just use a terminal. I usually use um, iTerm and I usually use a Z shell. So, so this might be fun. Um, Okay, okay, cool. So that's that's running. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab, let me just see, 192, 168, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me just change, switch the scenes. Okay, so that is the homepage. It's it's not great, is it? I mean, come on. <coughs> but it, 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 uh, it shows that, uh, that, that, that everything's wired up. It shows that there's no errors. Um, and this here is obviously a link that goes back to the home page. And I guess what I could do is I could just demonstrate how that hangs together in this Twitch stream. So what we've done here is we've landed on the index.php file in public. Um, we don't need to worry about that today uh, at, at the moment. And um, 
we're, we're now down in line nine. So we're doing a require once of views.php, which is uh, in here. Um, and we're going to home. Now this is going to be changed to be more of an MVC kind of approach. So there's going to need to be some mechanism that knows that the root of forward slash goes to the controller home um, with potentially the the, the uh, action of index. So I'm gonna need to build that somehow. Um, but uh, as I said, I'm doing this very ad hoc. I'm kind of just building things when I need to build things. So I'll just move this over here to make you, allow you to see. So here we have um, uh, templates and base. So that goes into here, templates and then base.php. Uh, so that that is basically the, um, the, the, the raw HTML and then we are including a primary menu at this point, which is do 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 here. So there we go. I mean, that's that's that is um, a very uh, slapdash approach to writing a templating engine. Um, and uh, you know, I please do know that I w would like to stress that this is certainly isn't going to be a replacement for anything like Twig. I'm not. A, I'm not even. You know, that was a consideration to use Twig to use something that would have just allow me to snap things in and have done. But I've decided to try and do this as, um, as I po as much as I possibly can. Okay. So that was where we were left yesterday, uh, with, the uh, with the homepage as shown. <clears throat> and what I was doing today was, uh, building up this kernel, the, uh, the kernel here, um, and actually sort of like wiring up the classes. And I know that, I know that, um, <coughs> excuse me, I know that um, the vote is still going on. You know, we don't know yet if it's going to be an invoicing app or a note-taking app or, or what have you. <coughs> but regardless of, of application, we still need to have A, a site, um, and B, we need to have some form of class structure um, and some sort of convention. So that was what I was dealing with today. So I built um, entity, form, helper, and repository folders. And I'll go through each one of those um, and how they and how they are wired up, and then I'll do some coding. <coughs> so, <clears throat> okay. So on line four, whoops, on line four, uh, we're requiring the um, the kernel. So this is require once into the kernel. Um, and let's just save that. So that goes to SRC um, <clears throat> helper, and I get kernel and then kernel.php, very, very basic. Um, th this could, I guess, pull in some configuration from somewhere if needed. Um, no, nope, I don't need to worry about that. <coughs> um, perhaps, I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, th this is kind of like the way of just sort of splitting out um, uh, logical processes, I suppose. So here we get the document route and we know that we're in public, so we have to go back a, a, a level. Um, and then we can go into SRC helper, uh, auto loader, auto loader. Um, so let's just pull that out again. So, uh, there we go. Okay. Do, do, do. All right. So here we go. So we're in auto loader, auto loader. So this is a class which auto loads classes like class inception here. Um, so this this is one of the lessons that I will be teaching um, how to do auto loading in PHP, um, how to how to load up your classes. <clears throat> and um, I guess I could talk about the static um, maybe, although I don't really think this is a good example of of um, or a full example of how what the difference between static, um, and, and non-static methods and, and, and pro properties and stuff, but I'll obviously mention it in the in the lecture. So here we go. We've got a function loader, and we are um, we're doing an auto load. We're registering registering that um, as a static uh, method call. So we pass in the class name that we want to instantiate, um, and or. I shouldn't say instantiate. This is the well, yeah, we are we do want to instantiate, but we're not instantiating at this point. We're we're just we want to just simply include it. So um we get the base path as we've done before. Now notice this. And um where are we? Kernel. 
right? They're pretty much the same. So that's duplicate code. It's a code smell. I'm going to need to find some way of, of, of sorting that out um, at some point, perhaps. Um, but anyway, and then we and then what we do is um, for for giggles, I've added extension um, just in case we want a different extension. <laughs> um, although it is PHP, and then we're doing a class path. We, we we're getting that we're signing that variable to um, this string, and this string is made up of a set a string replace. Um, we're replacing the namespace. Um, uh, uh, sections, <coughs> dom 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 denominations, I should say. Um, we're replacing that with a directory separator, and, we're, and that's the class name. Um, so, and then we build the full path from that, and then we include it. Now, now there is there is obviously uh, it, several issues here. This isn't very performant at all, um, and and all of that jazz. So I might I might sort of like think about making that a little bit more sort of cache esque, um, perhaps. But anyway, it works. So we're we're now out out of the kernel, um, and what I can do is go back to the index.php. Um, and up here we have a, an oops uh, an import. So what we've done woohoo this way. So what we've done here is we've imported repository type invoice. And if you notice on the autoloader, um, we are replacing the uh, namespace denominations f uh, with a directory separator. So if I go back to kernel, it's going oops sorry not kernel index.php. It's going to replace each one of these with a directory separator. Um, the convention being that everything needs to be like within its own uh, directory. So that's a directory, that would be a di directory, uh, and th that would be the class name. <coughs> okay, right, so let's, let's go and take a look at this class. So this is the invoice class, and I can do that, and in PHPStorm, I can do that too. So this is in repository type. So this is a class that I built today. Um, and hey, this, you know, it might not be an invoice. Uh, this could be, this could be a customer. This could be, um, a note if it's a note taking app or, or what have you, but it's, um, it's not an entity. Sorry. It's a repository. Here we go. Right. So we're in here. Um, and uh, this, so this this um, this can be be multiple lessons, I think, because here we have um, we've obviously got namespace, so that's you know talking about namespaces, that's another lesson. <coughs> um, we've got uh, this import here, so we we're importing an abstract repository, um, and we can see all of these um, blank empty methods, um, and the reason why we have empty methods as if, if I jump up to um, the abstract repository, which is here, it is an abstract class. So again, that is an, another lesson that, um, a, you know, a, a whole tutorial about what on earth an abstract class is. Um, it's fantastic because this, this abstract class, uh, because it's abstract will define um, how the classes that extend this class need to behave or, or not yeah need to maybe that's not the right term um, they, they define the methods in which they should have um, so for example uh, because this is abstract there must be a save there must be a find one there must be a find uh, one by and there must be a find all by now this is very different from an interface because an interface is more about um, having a contract between two objects and that's the, the how an object should possibly behave rather than defining how what what methods a class should have <coughs> and also properties too um, so okay so and um, so what I could do is I could I could have had um, an, an interface called I don't know um, repository interface or something daft and I could have had all of these in and I could have implemented that in 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 here rather than extend the abstract repository the problem there is that um, <coughs> because because there isn't two classes 
um, that are not sort of like uh, inherited together and they don't uh, they don't sort of intermingle. You're not you're not sort of defining the contract between the two two classes, the two objects. What you're doing here is you're defining the structure of of what the classes should be, which means that for every repository that I create, be it um, a customer, an invoice, an invoice item, what have you, they must all have a save. They must all have a find one. Um, find one by, find all by, and they must implement um, that, you know, that uh, that that way of doing it. Um, <coughs> so, they, so what I'm saying is, they must have that sort of method signature. Um, and uh, I haven't really thought yet how to translate this back to MySQL. I'm guessing there needs to be a, some form of layer that does all this. Um, I'm even thinking of perhaps having a factory class, which will, um, have a way of, uh, creating a repository based on an entity. Um, this I've taken a lot of inspiration from doctrine. I'm a heavy symphony, heavy Laravel developer. <coughs> I'm a freelancer. I, I, you know, I, I do, I do all, all the stuff freelance and, um, I use doctrine all the time it's a fantastic ORM um, but I want to in this course build my own um, it's it's certainly not going to be a fully fledged ORM it's not going to have any it's not going to have any points on doctrine at all I'm not intending on on uh, on replacing it or replacing twig for the uh, templating engine the reason why I've done this, as I've mentioned, is is that I want to talk about the structure of this application and talk about the object orientation of this application when I do my course. When I'm, but but obviously I need to have the application first in order to do that, and that is what we're doing in this stream. Okay. All right. So we've got this abstract um, class here, which is which is good. Uh, we've also got an abstract entity, <coughs> um, and the reason why so so an entity will be the a representation of of a table um, in the sort of the object orientated manner, uh, and the reason why I've created an abstract uh, class here, an abstract entity, is that there are certain properties that every table will have. So, for example, an ID, date created, date updated, and then these are the getter and setter methods for those things. Um, another reason why I can, you know, I want to use abstract classes is because I can talk about visibility scopes. Um, so these are all protected, whereas these are all public and so on and so forth. So at some point, once the vote has passed, um, I will be filling out these entities based on... Um, based on what application people choose would like me to build. Um, I only had invoice here because I needed something to sort of like uh, t try out and test the waters. <coughs> now, I'm not saying at all that this is the right way of, of, um, of building such an application. I'm just using it as a means to, to, um, to teach object orientation in PHP. Um, if, if a client of mine says that they want an invoice application, I certainly wouldn't use this, <laughs> um, because this is just a training aid. And then in form, what I want to have is just a series of form classes. Um, <coughs> so I could have a base, I could have an abstract form class, uh, at some point too. Okay. So that's basically where it's all left. Um, and here I can say like, you know, find one by and passing in an arbitrary, um, ID the, the, you know, this is just pseudo code, right? So none of this is actually going to work because there, there, whoops, because there isn't a database, um, configured. There's no, um, schema built or anything for it. That's what's going to go up in here. So we have schema.sql. I should say that all of this is on GitHub. Um, so it's on my GitHub uh, profile. I'll put links in the show notes at some point. Um, I can't remember how to do that with Twitch at the moment. It's been such a long time since I've been on Twitch. Um, okay. 
Right. So what shall we do today? <coughs> Apart from drink tea. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, continue on the build process. Uh, we need a controller. We need something to... to um, uh, work out the routing um, because with the if it was an invoice app you would have you would have a route for for displaying an invoice creating an invoice deleting an invoice adding an invoice item and so on and so forth not that invoices get deleted they just get marked as sort of voided whatever I don't really care um, so <clears throat> it's been a long day and I should also stress that my voice is a bit raw uh, because actually today what I've been working on um, is my Python clean coding course for packed publications and I've just finished it. Um, I've so, so I just did the summary video um, and the intro video um, and I've pushed that all up to, um, you know, packed and they're going to review it like they do and then they'll probably come back to me with some alterations and changes um, maybe i don't know um but uh, yeah it, that project was yeah it was a good pro it was a, a very good project and um <coughs> it's a bit it's a bit tricky sometimes when you're moving from python to php um because you end up writing something in one language and then you remember that you actually should be writing it in another language and there's all these weird idioms and stuff, and especially talking about clean coding in Python, um, where you're dealing with Pythonic code, uh, and there's no Pythonic code in PHP. <laughs> there's PHP onic code. Anyway, that's by the by. So my voice is a little bit uh, rubbish. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really thought this through. Um, as to how this is all going to be hanging together, but uh, I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna throw stuff at the page and see if it sticks. So I, I want a controller, um, and what I want to do is I want to get from public. I want to somehow interpret the URL that's coming through, um, and then I want some way of mapping that to the controller. So. Here I would have um, something like home home controller. Well, I don't know. That's a symphony way. You're having like the, the the suffix of controller. Let's just call it home because that's you know that's what it is. Um, <coughs> and um, what I like to do is just we'll just uh, grab that. Oh no, we won't. No, we won't. Uh, da -da -da -da. What are, what are we doing here? I just want to have a look at where the okay, so that's where the namespaces start. So that would be uh, namespace <clears throat> controller, um, and we probably will have an abstract controller. In fact, we should, following convention, we should have a type. Um, if you notice what I've done, and this is just my own little f foil ball, fo fobble, I suppose, my, my own little uh, craziness is um, that should, so that should be type, um, like so, is that, let's say, for example, the repository, we have a type, and then we have the base class underneath. So I guess this is where, if I needed to have any interfaces, I would put the interfaces it, at this point, and then I would have actually have the the the, the conc concrete classes within the types. Um, it's a bit of a symphony form way of doing it, where you have the form types in symphony. Um, but I like doing it, and if I can follow the, that convention throughout, then then so be it. So here we got entity and type. Uh, here we have um, we'll have form and type, and we have a repository and type. And so we have controller and type which is home. So therefore, uh, I should have a abstract controller. Um, and this will have the namespace, believe it or not, 
of controller. And that would be an abstract class of uh, abstract controller. Like so. Now, I don't, I don't have anything to put in it yet. Um, I'll need to think about that. Possibly we could have um, methods in this abstract controller that handle things like, um, you know, um, uh, flash, flash mes messages if I decide to have any session bits and pieces um, or, or, or what have you. Any kind of methods in here that, that other controllers um, could use, could utilize. Uh, ideally, you want to keep your controllers to be nice and light. Um, so, you know, this whole sort of uh, thin controller fat model type type uh, affair. So anyway, we um, we should have a public function. Whoops, no, <laughs> we should have a class, first of all. Um, and we're going to call this home. And this extends uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, abstract controller. <coughs> Wonderful. And uh, we're going to just create a public uh, function. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. Probably index because, you know, it is the index page after all. Index. Come on. Where's the X? Can't find on the keyboard. Um, <clears throat> we should pass in a request uh, with Symfony and, and Laravel and so forth. You pass in a request object um, and then you can work through that. Um, I, I haven't even thought of of uh, of that yet. Um, I just want to get to this point, and then I want to render out a template. That's basically what I want to do. Um, so that's that set up. Um, and I guess what I should do is uh, da -da -da. so we've got the kernel. I think what I will do is I'll have in my helper folder. I'll have um, some sort of root, some sort of routing. Um, I, I'm not sure which. What is the best way to do this? Uh, maybe p, maybe uh, regex, where you pass in the pass in the query string, and then sort of decipher that map it to a, a root. Um, I know that, you know, Symfony has um, uh, annotations and, and uh, YAML and all of that jazz. Um, I don't have that luxury. So I think, and, and really these applications are gonna be nice and light, right? So, you know, an invoicing app isn't gonna have every single feature an invoicing app should have. It's just gonna have things like, you know, um, creating a, a, a customer creating a an invoice adding an invoice item deleting an invoice item um, that kind of stuff so it, it it isn't we're not talking about hundreds of routes here so I can get away with um, making something a little bit more clunky um, for this to work anyway I'm just talking and rambling on because I don't actually know how this is going to hang um, <laughs> So I'm guessing we, you know, we're going to need a namespace, right? Um, and this is a helper. And whoops. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, root. Class. Root. Actually, um, maybe this should be called router rather than root, uh, because because what I would like to do is I would like to register routes to the router. So you have a root uh, for every um, for for every route you have a, perhaps a class um, that doesn't sound very performant at all. Um, and then you can register that. So it's a bit like a pub sub. So you're subscribing. Um, I guess I could do that. And I guess I could talk about like um, the command pattern, maybe some sort of design pattern where uh, you have a series of, and I could, I guess like at that point, I could also talk about encapsulation. 
so you could have a root with the actual root um, credentials, not credentials, that's the wrong word, um, sort of the path um, and all the attributes of the root encapsulated in the root class and then you register that root class for the router and you perhaps have a, a factory which does all this. Um, some sort of like event subscribing mechanism where you're not event subscribing, you're subscribing the root to the router or something like that. Um, because I want, I want to get into, I want, I want to get into design patterns, um, with this course, I think I, I want to, I want to give it some, some meat, you know, this, I, I it, you know, the, the, the course I did with, um, OOP beforehand, it was like, yeah, this is an abstract controller. And this means that, uh, with a, with an abstract controller, you can't have a constructor, um, and all of that, and uh, you know, that's all good. That's all good. You need to know that. But without having the example that backs that up, um, it, it can be a bit difficult to translate that into a real world scenario. How are we doing for time? Um, where on Twitch does it show my time? Is it 41 minutes? Okay. <coughs> I can see it on OBS. Yeah, 41 minutes. Okay, right. Apologies for coughing at you all. I hope you don't catch anything. So, uh, okay, we've got the class router. I'm also going to create a new class, and we're going to call this root. Um, and let's just copy all of the, these things. So the root we're going to have a private variable, a private property, I should say, of um, path, because or it should actually be URI, or it should actually be pattern. Oh, naming things is so difficult in programming, um, because that's the pattern you want to um, sort of like check against. So in my head, right, right now, what I'm thinking of doing is having some form of uh, mechanism that has sort of like uh, an interface where you are uh, checking where, where the, the class has some sort of processing mechanism so it, it's checking the current route against the the thing and then uh, and then coming back with the, the route something like that in a in a for each loop it sounds horribly unperformant but like I said there is only going to be a couple of routes to worry about so you know, hey ho. So we have a private uh, pattern, and then we we gonna have some sort of private um, uh, controller, <clears throat> and then we're gonna have a private uh, method, right? Because then what I can do is once I've distinguished the root. I can then go, right, let's instantiate this controller and then let's run this method. Something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to let me just bring this out a little bit so you can see it. <coughs> okay, so we have a string and I guess this is also a string. Actually, um, Actually, 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 I think to begin with, no, 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 they should all be strings. They should all be strings. And we just check whether they're empty, I think. Or if they're empty, they might as well be null. So in that case, let's set this to null. Uh, although I would have to check the type if they were null. All right, so let's have these as strings. <laughs> Going all over the place. Okay, um, <clears throat> we're gonna create an interface now. Woo! Actually, I will create an interface in a second. Um, we're gonna have a public function. We're gonna create a constructor. <coughs> That's not a constructor, PHP Storm. That's a call. The only magic method I want is a constructor. Thank you. And so in here, let's bring that out a little bit. Come on, such a small window to work with. Uh, we have a string. 
string. Uh, and this is a pattern. And then we have uh, another string, which is a controller. And you've guessed it. Come on. OK, so um, we can now do this. Where are we? Pattern is equal to pattern. Uh, this uh, controller is equal to controller. I think I should be able to do this as a shortcut in, in PHP Storm, but hey ho. I like making work for myself. Method. Okay, that's um Okay, so what I'm kind of envisaging is like um an array of roots. So if I have um bear with me a minute. Bear with me a minute. Um Sorry. So, uh, what? Yeah, what I'm thinking is having an array of uh, roots, of root classes, and passing them to the router, um, and then the router makes the decision as to what root is to be used f based on the current pattern. So the router has the mechanism to uh, process that. So there's going to be like a a processor. This is a bit like a f f uh, dare I say the word factory, and I've gone and screwed that up. It's not a factory because we're not actually building roots from here. Um, I guess what we need to have is um, somewhere we have, I don't know, it could even be in here, I suppose, an array of roots and then passing that into the router. So I'm, what I'm thinking is like uh, new, I don't know. Should it be, it shouldn't be a class, so it shouldn't be in here. So I, let's just do, maybe it goes in the kernel. I don't know. This is this probably isn't the best place to put it, but what I'm thinking is having like um, roots is equal to an array where we have the pattern And we have the controller, and we have a method, something like that. Um, and obviously, this is an, um, a nested array, so you would you would have all of those things like so in here. Um, and then, and then, you know, I, I'm just going to throw this out here. So we just do for each uh, roots as root, um, and then you just do like something like R. I don't know. Let's just do n is equal to new uh, root uh, root. There we go. And then what you do is you pass in the the uh, the bits and pieces. Um, and then, and then from here, so this is, um, so this is poly, sort of like a polymorphism type, type affair. Um, so that, so you would, you would pass in all the bits and pieces. I'm going to pass in the, the, let's just have, um, root data. Um, so that would be a root, and we will <coughs> have use just because I don't like uh, massive namespaces. <coughs> now, obviously, we've passed in an array, uh, and we need to have uh, these things. So, I. I I would like to pass in a, 
an array rather than the individual properties. So I'll have to have some form of handling that. I'll do that in just a second. But essentially what I want is something like this. So we have like um, roots, roots. And you're probably thinking, why on earth are you doing this? Like, why why have you created an array? And then why are you looping through that array and then creating um, a root from that and then just adding that back to an array? What's the point? Um, well, well, I know that you know. I know that this could be super <coughs> super easier if. Um, if it was just an array and it didn't need to have all these classes, but because this is an object orientated um, uh, course, I'm, I'm looking for excuses to use various different object orientated paradigms. Uh, so this here would be your, um, your, your almost your polymorphism type affair where you don't actually know because now you've got the root built array, you don't actually know which root is what. Um, so you're creating classes without actually being aware of of what is actually built in those classes, um, and then at some point, I guess uh, down here we would we would then have um, you would pass in some sort of I don't know. Um, so it would be no uh, something like current current uh, current pattern is equal to something like. And this is probably all wrong. Something like that. And then you would do something like use router. Boom. Um, you would do something like router equals new. new router, you would pass in the array of roots. I mean, you could even, you could even do, you could even do something like this. So you could do router uh, register. And you're passing in the root, right? Which means that you you know you're building up you're building up the uh, the the roots. This would be a, a, an array of registered roots. Um, it could even be keyed by the pattern, which means that you know each one is 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 nice and unique. <coughs> um, something like that. Um, but this 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 is a good sort of like um, step into the pub sub type type affair, uh, where you're you're um, subscribing um, a, a root. You're registering a root to the router, and then I mean I know that these methods don't exist. This is just pseudo code, but you could have something like router, um, uh, something like process, and then that would be that would return the uh, known uh, known root or yeah known root. So that would return the known root after you've processed it. And then what you could do is you could do something like so you would do then controller is equal to known root, and then you would get something like um, get whoops get controller. I mean you could even just do um, controller is equal to new, and then you would do controller um, and then you would uh, do known root uh, where we are get method something a little bit like that ish sort of I mean that was just very ad hoc this is just coming straight out of my head I haven't really thought of thought this through <laughs> the code is terrible. Um, you know, I, I certainly miss <laughs> the Symphony's routing engine. <laughs> Symphony's routing component, I should say. Uh, as you can see, there's no composer here. I'm, I'm trying to do all of this without composer. Um, 
<laughs> oh, that's her. That's terrible. That's terrible. Anyway, um, okay. So now we can build up our, our an array of roots. This could probably be stored somewhere else. We could even read this from a YAML file or a JSON file or, or what have you. Um, so I guess that would be something like slash, and then that would be something like home, and then that would be something like index, right? So, you know, there we go. And, and you could even have a regex on there. So you could have uh, ba -ba 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 boom, boom, something like that. Um, so we know that everything you know, where it starts and it finishes with just a slash, we want to go to the home controller and we want to run the index method. Um, so you could, you could uh, have or foresee me whoops, many of these things. So let's say, for example, let's say we've got, we are doing this invoice app. So you could do something like um, a customer and you could have controller customer Um, and then the method index. Uh, you could also have <clears throat> something like customer, and then you could you could even have a placeholder. So you could have ID, um, and then that would be sort of customer, and um, that would be sort of like uh, well, maybe that maybe uh, something like. Um, record or something method record so that's getting the customer record um, you could also have something like customer add right so that would be going to the customer add method uh, you could also have something like you know invoice so I'm, I'm just playing around man I'm just sort of like messing up messing around invoice in I can't spell it um, so you could have it like invoice ID and that would go to the invoice controller um, record something like that and I mean this I mean you know you can see this is getting quite long and lengthy so this would probably be better if it was stored somewhere else um, <laughs> but what what we're doing here is we're building up a bunch of um, encapsulated roots. So we're starting with root. We're passing that through. Now, one thing that a lot of people are probably going to hate me on is the fact that I haven't done any testing for this, um, and I appreciate that. Trouble is, if I was to if I if I was to do testing the way I normally do testing, I'm going to need to have a library. Um, I know that's no excuse for not testing. Um, there should be tests. I'm going to think on that. I'm going to think on that. Um, it would probably help the future uh, and the speed of the development of this because this is this is obviously going really slow. Um, if there were tests, because then I, I when I get to the point of having to find bugs and there will be bugs, um, then you know I can write tests to back up those things, but uh, currently there's no tests, and that's my bad. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see if we can get something like this to sort of like work. <laughs> Why not? All right, so we have uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to put in um, an array, right? So let's go over here. This this won't work. Um, because these are putting in parameters, uh, you know, like properties, uh, rather than an array of options. And I'm going to just give this as null. Um, no, 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 it will be a array. We're going to force it. It needs to be an array. There we go. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a public, well, yeah, okay, fine, public, I'm just wondering when I should introduce the old interfaces, public function handle, um, and this is going to take the array, 
Um, and we're just going to grab that, bung it down here, and then we're just going to do this. Handle, and then options. Now, the reason why I've done that um, is to show that the constructor can actually call other methods. Um, I could have just instantiated a blank class and then just called handle, um, you know, because it is a public method. Sorry, messages going left, right, and center. Um, right, so, <coughs> but I'm not because I'm a rebel. Uh, because, I, you know, I, I still want to do something with this constructor, I think. Uh, okay, so let's do an if. Um, if is set. Options. And what did I call it? Pattern. Pattern. Um, so if. Then we're going to throw a new exception. Um, and this is going to be uh, pattern is required. Come on, come on. I think to get around the testing, I'm just sort of like half of my brain is thinking about testing. I think to get around that, I think what I could do is I could have composer running globally and have uh, things like uh, PHP unit um, installed, you know. Um, do do, and then and then and then. So what I'm saying is that if I did that, then there's no need for the PHP unit to be installed in the application. Um, I, you know, the, the problem with testing from a um, from my perspective, um, from a you know from someone who's trying to build a course, is that a your course needs to work right. Your course needs to work um, as best as it possibly can do, um, <clears throat> and so and so testing is it, it, it is required right. One should test their work, and you know bugs like this um, need to be need to be found and captured. Fine. The trouble is that this course isn't a course on testing. This course is a, a course on object oriented programming, and one could argue, well, you still need to test your work. You know that's just good practice. You need to test your stuff, but. Um, one could also argue that that is now a barrier of entry to the course that you need to be aware of te how to test. I'm going to ponder on that. I'm going to argue with myself over that um, because there is a big portion of me that's like, no, you need to te get these unit tests in because I, you know, I keep moaning about you know not not having decent tests in in um, in my work and. You know, this is just an example of it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll need to think this through, uh, and probably <coughs> when when um when I do have the tests in place, um, I will probably find that a lot of this stuff needs to be refactored. <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, I'm sort of arguing with myself with that. Because if, if I have, if I have that, that mentality, then every course that I do needs to have tests, right? And, you know, that's just nuts. Like, you see so many videos on uh, YouTube and, and Twitch where the coder isn't actually doing any tests. And I'm not saying that that excuses the fact that you need tests. You need tests. But if the if your learning 
specifically object oriented programming, you're not actually learning tests, you're learning object oriented programming. That's what the person has wanted to see. Um, they, they haven't requested to see tests. Mm, I don't know. I can, yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a code smell, in my opinion. I should be doing a, some sort of array walk rather than all of this jazz. Um, and, and, and I would get to that conclusion because testing this handle method would be painful um, because there's so much, you know, it's a, you know there's so much um, duplication here. This is a code smell. This is a code smell. This is a code smell, you know. <coughs> this could be done so much better. Um, and it's not. Anyway, I've removed that from my clipboard, haven't I? Yeah, I have. What a moron. Um, so this should be this. Uh, da -da -da -da, controller is equal to... I mean, this looks awful. I'm going to have to have a serious think as to how I can refactor this. I've just like duplicated the word controller options and um, method in well how many times one two uh, and then obviously pattern so three right that's that's not good <sighs> dear hey, let's just try and get this concept working um, and then I'll worry about making this a little bit tidier um, okay okay so we handle all that jazz uh, we throw all the exceptions if needed um, which will you know turn our nice little application into a into a dumpster fire um, of error logs <coughs> okay so that's that done um, where did we end up we ended up in the kernel all right so that's that uh, bit sorted out. Yay. Okay, so we pass in the query string, which I don't think is correct. Um, <laughs> but we'll, we shall see. Now we need to have a register method on the router. So, um, so we, so up here we have private if I can spell private Private does not have an S. Thank you. And that is an array. Um, so we have public function and we do register. And we pass in the root um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this uh, roots and I'm going to index it by the root uh, get pattern have I not created the <coughs> have I not created that yet? And pass that in as root. Something like that. And then, and then let's just return this. Yay, I can hear the neighbor's dog barking and my cat crying. It's stopped now. Okay. All right, okay, so we're registering those roots um, and we don't have a get pattern on the root itself. Why don't we do that? <sighs> do do do. Where are we in this maze of code? So, root. Okay, no, we don't. All right. Okay, fine, fine, we can set that up. I think it's control N, boom, and then we can do implement getters and setters, fluent, blah, 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 bingo. 
Okay, so we have get pattern, we've got uh, set pattern, and oh, is that the only one I did? It's failure. Oh, I needed to select them all. There we go. So now we've got set method and get method, set controller and get controller. And this is awesome. This is all uh, returning um, data types. Again, this is something that I'm going to pick up in the course as well. Marvelous. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we, we're, we're now registering. We're, we're now cooking on gas. We're now registering the route um, to there, which means that um, I could, if I wanted to, Where are we? <laughs> okay. Why don't we have get method? Am I not adding get method to the root? We have pattern controller and method. We have get method. And we have set method. So why on here? Uh, okay. Okay. Because this is dynamically generated okay so um, obviously I need to put this in a try catch um, and you, what we would do is we would pass in the current pattern to here um, and uh, da, 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 da. okay so we need a process method come on in the router Come on. There we go. Process. And this is a string, which is a uh, current pattern. Now, um, the interesting thing here is that the pattern that we're passing through is a regex, like that. So I'm going to have to do some fancy regexing to make sure that that pattern matches. Um, yeah. Oh dear. I don't like regex. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So I'm passing that through current pattern process. And so really we want the pattern well we it's not really the current pattern is it we want um so we're going to need to do something like for each um let me think let me think we don't want to do that do we the pattern is the key so that isn't the current pattern. This is the current um, URI. That's what it is. And what we want to do is we want to loop, loop over this roots as uh, root data. <coughs> um, and then we want to do some sort of regex to 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 match that. Uh, although that that's just not performant at all. What if you had like hundreds of these things? Not that it will, but uh, mm, damn it. Maybe I'm overcomplicating this. Maybe um, maybe I should look upon this routing mechanism. Uh, differently. Maybe I should just have raw PHP files. Um, what am I trying to achieve here? I'm trying to achieve uh, a controller model view sort of architecture where in the index file um, we are uh, loading up the kernel and we're passing in uh, the Let's just comment that out because that doesn't make any sense at the moment. Uh, 
So we, we, we're hitting the kernel. So let's just remove that. Well, no, let's keep it. We're in the kernel. <coughs> and we've got the current query string, or the uh, the URI, I should probably change that too. Um, and then we're trying to find the controller that is represented by that the pattern of that query string. Uh, yeah, and then once that happens, once that happens, we have a known root, and then we can instantiate that root, get the controller from it, and then uh, run that get method. Um, and that would return <clears throat> a template. And then, whoops, and then you might sort of include that template, or require that template, or something, you run that template, um, render that template, I should say. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's let's say let's say instead of instead of the current pattern, let's say we just want to get to slash right. So this should be current URI, and you pass that in. See, this is where testing would be amazing. Uh, okay, so we pass that in. What's going on here? Okay, that's void. Um, so that would be slash for each root as root data. <coughs> I guess um, for ease of use, I think what I'm going to do, because like, I'm just thinking like these patterns are going to get complicated when I have to deal with like IDs and stuff. Um, and also I need some form of mod rewrite, uh, which is <sighs> okay. So, I mean, I could do all this in mod rewrite. I could, I, I could do that. that. That would solve that headache, but this to me is more of a good example of 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 how to uh do some sort of like um lessons in o <coughs> in oo <coughs> oh man <coughs> wow <coughs> excuse me uh because you know we've got arrays and we've got polymorphism going on and encapsulation and all that jazz um so okay, let's all right, I'm going I'm beating around the bush here. So okay, let's just remove Let's just remove that one. So it's just the one we're just working on the one for now. Okay, so that's slash, that goes to index index. Um Okay, so now we're in the process. So we have, uh, we could even do this by array keys. Or we could simply, instead of skipping all of this, we could simply do which is slightly faster than doing a loop <coughs> if this um, is set this roots current URI um, if that is set then what we do is we get the uh, root which is this roots current URI and that would return a root right um, so that would that would work and obviously we want to just change that to be uh, if that's false that should throw a 404 and that should then therefore return a root all right so for now, I'm just going to throw a new exception, 
which is um, cannot find, and I know this is bad because this should be throwing a 404, although I could change the error code, I suppose. Cannot find uh, root for and then putting in the path. Um, like so, and I think, uh, yeah, let's change that up here, import that, use exception. Can I part? I'm sure I can. Whoops. Uh, keyboard. No, 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 no. Right. Uh, code, yeah. Second argument. Oh, don't do that. Let me go back to my previous file, please. Thank you. Okay, so that would be a 404. Um, and then we return the root, so that would be um, returning the root. So essentially what we've done is we've just sort of like pulled out the root that is matching by the current URI. Uh, but by doing <coughs> by doing this, you, you, you're 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 handing over the responsibility of processing the root to the router. It's not um, the the responsibility of the root itself. The root itself is just a generic sort of class that that holds the information about the root, not how the root is to be processed. Um, so when we come to things like parameters with IDs and so forth. Um, I'm going to have to find a way of, of passing that through. Um, but I want to try and do it as simply as possible uh, because, you know, the, this isn't supposed to be a replacement for the Symfony routing um, component. <laughs> okay, so back to the kernel. Come on, this way. All right, so the, we've got the uh, the process here. So we've got a warning saying unhandled expectation, uh, exception, expectation, probably. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably, I'll need to do this in a try catch, obviously. Um, and then we do controller equals new instantiation of controller, get controller. Uh, can't find, not found in root Y. Why? So that usually means that I've spelt this thing wrong. I can see it just there. So why are you... It's not a field, it's a method. That's weird. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, sorry. Controller equals new uh, root. Root is, okay, so I'm not instantiating, I'm, you know, because I'm passing in the root here. There we go. Okay, cool. <coughs> uh, and then we're passing in the uh, controller, and then we're pulling out the method. Um, <laughs> so, okay, I think what I'm going to do just to make this, uh, just to ha sort of, um, dare I say the word test, I'm going to have just, I'm just going to return... Um, you have accessed the home index, the home controller, and called the index method. <coughs> okay, so we're just going to return a string, um, and this will probably fall flat on its face. Um, why is that complaining? Because oh, of the exceptions. And um, I think... Let me just walk through this. So index, then we go views home. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I guess for for just now, what I could do is I could just echo that out. Well, let's just do a var dump. Make sure it is all the right things. I'm doing var dump because um, 
if I did a print then and if it was null it would just be blank so var dump and I'll just do a die just to just to um, kill it off okie dokie um, <laughs> how confident am I that this is gonna work <laughs> I've just refreshed the page and boom it's blown up Okay, parse error, syntax error, uh, okay, the T array expecting function uh, or const in router dot line on line 10. Okay, let's see where that has blown up. I go back to my code. It is the router, not the root, and it is on line 10, which is here, and uh, unexpected array. Ah, uh, it's because, sorry, we're not on PHP 7.4. <laughs> not yet. And this one's the next error. So, um, uncaught type error, return value, a get method must be of type string, but null is returned. Um, so, pants, basically. That that. See, this is where testing would be very, very, very handy. Um, because I would be writing tests to check all these things. <laughs> On line 95, rather than just doing this all sort of ad hoc and just I'm basically just throwing up code from my head into the keyboard like such as some sort of drunken programmer um, I guess that's kind of like the analogy isn't it if you're if you're not testing your work then you might as well just be hammering the keyboard with your elbow um, anyway so SRC helper root root uh, on line 95 Uh, here we go. So it's uh, returning nothing. Even though it's a string, somehow that's turned into a null. <coughs> so um, I'm guessing it's something to do with this method is equal to... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. See, testing. Test your code, Pete. Test your code. <laughs> the next error is just a big fat null. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Marvelous. Um... Let me just, uh, the next thing, the next best thing from a test, I suppose, is to have a look at the, um, where are we, uh, da -da -da -da, the terminal, if I can find the terminal. Here we go. All right. Okay. So, we're going to do, um, uh, do I have a backward search on this? I don't know. I don't use this terminal. Uh, so... This would be logs. No, not docker, not not login. Okay, perhaps I don't. Docker uh, logs minus f and whoops, it is this guy here, the Frico camp container. Let's just make sure that's copied um, and paste that in. Okay, so we've got uh, a very unhelpful log file here. So it's 200 OK. So obviously that's wrong. <laughs> um, OK. All right. Let's OK, let's walk through this. Let's walk through this. So we go to the kernel. See, this is why I did a var dump, because then we can, you know, make sure that it is um, 
we get we get the data type. <coughs> um, so we haven't thrown any exceptions because there's no exceptions in the log. Um, so we got pattern, controller, and method. We're looping through the roots. Uh, I guess from this stage we can do a var dump and die just to ensure. I should again. I should be doing this through the PHP Storm debugger. But because I don't have xdebug installed on this container, it's a bit difficult. <coughs> okay, so the the the, um, the the roots built has been built, so that's fine. Um, and then, so we do, uh, da, 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 da. where are we passing that? Are we passing that anywhere? No, 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 that's silly. What we need to do, damn it. No, that's not right. Um, in fact, we can, we can, um, we can change all this, can't we? We can do, let's just bring all this up to here. We can register the root as soon as we, as soon as it gets built. So we don't need to have roots built. So we've got the current URI, we've got the uh, router. Uh, we're looping over the roots, which are all of these things. So there's only one at the moment. Um, and then we're passing in the root data, which is an array. And then we're registering that new instantiation of the root to the register. Um, I mean, this could be in a class called, and, and, and have a method called processor or something, a processor class. Anyway, uh, so, so then we get the known root um, and we, get, we run that. So let's see what the known root is. <clears throat> so the known root does work. So that is the known root. So we have that in play. Okay. Oh, hang on. Let me think. We're not actually instantiating the controller, are we? No, we're not. I don't think so. That's why. Um, yeah, we're not. We're not. Uh, controller is equal to known root get controller. That should be a new instance of controller. Trouble is, that needs to be an actual controller controller. So we could do something like home and class. So I could do use sorry that my code window is really small. I do apologize. Um okay. So now we've actually passed in the uh, the class name. Um, so now we can do a new blah blah blah. Um, yeah, let's just try that out. Let's just not run that, and let's instead run controller and see if that is the controller that I'm after. Yes, it is. Okay, that's cool. So there we go. You can see it there. Okay, um, so we have that. It's a string. Um, and can we do that? I'm not sure. Let's, let's see. No. 
No, we can't. So this is where the symphony stuff is really cool because it you can put in like annotations and stuff and it all gets handled in a magic way. Um, is it something like get class? I think maybe it's get class. I'm not sure. You pass in an object. No, that's not right, is it? I thought there was a <coughs> I thought there was a um, a method that you could run that would get the 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 class based on the, a, a string, um, like get get yeah, because calling this isn't going to work, um, because that's just returning a string, which is this up here, and you can't you can't just you can't just do new and then home class, um, I, I don't think can you I don't think you can, new home. No, that that is that ain't gonna work, is it? But what I do need to do, obviously, is I need to do. Ah, uh, I need to do. I need to do this. I need to do uh, controller name. This is getting messy now because that's the name of the controller, um, and then controller. Oops, is equal to new controller name. Boom. Like that. Though so that should return an object, which it does, of home. Um this is all getting a little bit clunky. All getting very clunky. And then down here where we have our template. Um, that should get the known root known, um, and again that needs to be. Oh, this is this is awful. <laughs> that is awful. That is some awful horrendous code. Um, what I've done right on browser, so it works. So we have you have access the home controller and called the index method. Um, but that is not nice code at all. Whoops. <coughs> um, because it's all very, um, it's all very dynamic. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's all very dynamic. I could use things like, um, there's a function uh, which gets the the called the called class or sort of like use user func. I could do that. I could do some user func stuff. Um, but but that is for a refactoring session, I think. I'm not I'm not really worried about this stuff at, at currently. Well, it's horrible code, but but the reason why I wanted to do this really was because uh, I can I can in the course I can talk about you know here is an array of of properties. Okay, we're going to loop over this array, and for for every instance of this iteration of this array, <coughs> we're going to instantiate we're going to instantiate a root. We're going to instantiate a class. That gives us an object, and then we're going to register that class to the router class to the router object, um, and you know that's very sort of pub sub. You you are subscribing to that. Um, the actual the, the the actual core 
uh, mechanics of getting this f- sort of like air quotes framework to work. I'm not, I, I'm not overly worried about. Um, so this is disgusting code in my opinion, but uh, because it's quite dynamic, it's sort of it's not very readable. Um, there's an awful lot of duplication in so in the router here. Um, not in the router, in the root. So where I'm doing the uh, handle, so that's that that that's a big code smell in my opinion. And I need to somehow solve the problem of parameters. Um, whoops, in the kernel somehow because you know they'll have IDs and, 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 and all sorts of stuff going on here anyway <coughs> that's the, that that's the temp I've got the the template here um, which is if I did where are we somewhere in there index see I'm even getting lost in this this uh, craziness so we do um, views and then home so in the home controller what we could do instead of returning that string we could return a view a, a template which is in views and then home um, we could also return an array where the index or well not the index sorry the first property is the um, template name and we could even have some uh, some parameters if we wanted to as the second uh, so we could have view and then we could have params <coughs> now really that should return an object um, where we have a view and we have uh, parameters and stuff a bit like the the you know returning the symphony uh, render view type jazz uh, but again we're not going to we're not changing we're not rebuilding that that's that's not uh, that's not my desire to rebuild the routing of symphony I just want to get something to work for this okay okay so go back to the kernel <coughs> um, this really isn't in a, this really shouldn't even be in the kernel to be honest this should be somewhere else um, that this list of roots should definitely be somewhere else um, okay I'll, I'll need to think about that but so we're in we're in index that's where we land um, and we load the kernel I'm just trying to think how do we how do we um, cuz some cuz cuz really what I need to do is I need to 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 do something that gets the view from the controller and then do boom <clears throat> so that would be view something like that so maybe if we were to put this business logic somewhere in a class somewhere so uh, we've got the router uh, that returns the, the you register the route to the router um, you then process that so it's not really a router <coughs> um, you could call it I guess a processor because that's what it, it kind of is you're processing processor um, just going to grab all of that stuff, 
bung that up in here, call that a processor. Okay, we don't need that at the moment. Um, and the in the kernel, so we have the 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 uh, the roots. Um, we need to have a Is it a processor or is it a mapper? Am I doing mapping here? I guess I am. Hmm. But anyway, I, I I basically want to put that in some sort of public function. I'm going to re read this tomorrow on the train and go, what on earth was I smoking? Um, process. Okay, so we need... What do we need? Go back to the kernel. So we're registering uh, all the routes. So that really needs to go somewhere else. So we pass in the router. Um, and we return. Whoops. Um, okay, so we pass in the router and we also pass in a string which is the current URI. Kind of need an interface for this to be honest. Um, okay, so we have the processor, we have the kernel. Um, that does the registration. Okay. Okay. So we do processor is equal to new processor. All these instances I'm making. I'm not going to be making this application very fast. <laughs> All right, so we instantiate a new processor and then we do processor, process, whoops. Passing in the router and um, the current URI, which in this case is just going to be slash. <clears throat> and that would become the view. <coughs> uh, so we've hidden all that nasty code in a processor. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Uh, do I want to get rid of the um, the for each loop? Yes, I do. So where should I put that? It can't go in the router. I guess it could go in the processor. Uh, 
this is now turning into more of a sort of a, a factory esque type thing. Maybe I should call that a factory rather than a. <coughs> Uh, no, I'll keep it to um, I'll keep it to a processor for now. But we have a processor, and we also have a function. Um, we're just gonna call this make. It's a it's a public function, of course. So we instantiate a new router. Um, and we pass in a bunch of roots and we return the router it's like a little make file I'm making all the roots so we go back to the kernel so we do uh, processor is called new processor and then processor make passing in the roots okay so this needs to come from somewhere that would also return we've made the router like so okay so that's making it a little bit more neater sort of um, so we're making that and then we're processing it fine uh, I don't think processor is the right word for that to be honest um, I, I need to think on that really uh, roots can, co can, can go somewhere completely different um, I think what I'm going to do is put those in They're not really. They're not really. They they don't normally go. They shouldn't really go in the public directory. Uh, helper root. I wonder if that should be called rooting rather than root, just root. Hmm. Or it could be router rather than root, and then change the name of router to be something else. Anyway, um, we. I think what what I could do, because technically speaking, where am I? In the kernel. Where's the kernel gone? In. Oops. Technically speaking, this is configuration. Um, that, that's configuration. So uh, I think what I need to do is I need to have something probably in here call it app I'm ripping off symphony now so call it app and then config um, and we have a PHP file and we just call this routing and the routing file where are we helper kernel kernel is just all of this stuff routing whoops damn it come on there we go Right, and we are literally just returning. Whoa. Sorry, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> there we go. Um, so we're just returning that out of this file. Um, and I think I can, I can make that just type and then just change that to be type like so because, you know, there's going to be other classes and stuff and we wouldn't want to have uh, an import of every single one that is, that is within type, so that's fine. Um, so in the kernel then, I'm gonna need some form of way, so that gets removed, which is nice, those two can go. Um, we need to somehow 
um, require once the um, the base path, and that's going back to there. Uh, do, 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 base path would be public, right? So we go down one and then we go into app and then we go into um, no, that's already happened, isn't it? Base path, that's already happened. So we go to app and then we go to config and then it is routing ing.php php um so okay and then can i do routing i don't know if i can do this i don't think i can equal that to there i don't think so um call that roots So if that has all worked, which I very much doubt it, it would have done. Okay, no. I need to have more confidence in myself. That has worked. <coughs> um, okay, so fine i should i should call this episode the terrible routing um something or other how to build a very bad routing application so okay so we have our roots that's all in there it's all in a single file which is nice and i can update that lovely um then we have this um stuff the processor which i'm really not happy about the name then we can we I mean why would you make something from a processor a processor processes anyway so we then have the router and we make the router so that could be a singleton um, and then we uh, do a view well it's, it's, it's view data isn't it because it's returning a, a string uh, an array um, and then what we could do is we could then do a require once well, no. Um, we could just return. Boom. Boom. Return that. <clears throat> and because that goes back to, where are we? Where did you go? The index file, which is in here. Um, so we've got all of this stuff. <coughs> so we can do view data. Is equal to that. And we could do uh, require once view data. This is all very terrible because there's no checking involved. a dynamic expression as well which is not very nice <laughs> and yet it still works <laughs> wow all right uh that was uh crazy okay i just want to try something out all right so we're going to add another route and i should be putting this in a test so we're going to just go to um, now I don't think this is going to work because I don't have mod rewrite on it'll probably just freak out and go customer doesn't doesn't exist um, uh, no it's not going to work is it because I don't have mod rewrite <laughs> Hmm. 
But I tell you what I could do is I could, um, where are we in controller, 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 in home, we could change that to be like <coughs> list, um, and that goes to list, um, and then in views, templates, home, Um, this is a list. So in the routing, I've changed that to go to list. And if I was to refresh the page, oh, I've got a 403, interesting. Um, if I was to refresh the page, we have, this is a list. So I it, it is it is sort of like a very loose routing engine type thing um, without any tests, uh, which is probably uh, really buggy and uh, undocumented and just you know full of duplication and the handled the exceptions are never handled. So you know all in all, it isn't really a good. Uh, a, a, a good <laughs> a good lot of code uh, but it works <laughs> to a degree uh, okay so I've, I've essentially created um, a controller with these actions um, yeah all right okay fine um, I've got a bunch of views here it's all very basic stuff. The kernel is getting messy. I could put that in a single function, couldn't I? A, a method. Abstract that out and just say like, um, and have it static. <coughs> um, so I could have something like, uh, um, view dot dot run and then you pass in the um the the current uri something like that and this you would end up with something like um um um, 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 um yeah view is equal to that right something like that um and then and that would sort of like uh, handle all of this stuff. Um, it would make the roots. And really, uh, I mean, this is not nice at all because what we're doing here is we're creating an array every time the page refreshes. Um, which isn't nice at all. This really should be handled in, in like some sort of memory type thing. I mean, I'm just thinking now. If if this was client work, um, I would be I would be throwing all sorts of things at it, like um, caching and everything. Uh, well, I wouldn't even be using this. I'd be using Symfony uh, or Laravel. But uh, yeah, okay. I've I've got something there to work with because I've got. I can say that you know we're we are. Um, looping over a bunch of array data and then we're instantiating a new class and then we are using some sort of design pattern here to register the root um, and then that returns an, an instance of the router with an array of all the roots um, and then from that I can process those roots based on the current URI. Um, I guess that is is okay to a degree as in the concept I'm happy with. 
Um, the, it's the execution that I, I, I think I need to tidy up a lot because uh, I'm not happy with this code. I feel, you know, sometimes when you write code, you just feel like it's messy code. You just feel dirty. You just feel like, like this isn't the good, the good solution. And you know what? The first solution that you come up with is never really the, the, the solution that you end up with. The whole point of refactoring is, is that you, you, you know, and I'm talking now because I did a whole refactoring course or clean coding course in Python. And there was a large part of that was, which was refactoring. When you refactor, you do small little in increments, um, and you make the code more usable and friendly and readable. Um, and I guess right now I just don't have that lovely confident feeling that this is actually um, good code. And I think that is largely in part because there is no test to back this up. Um, and I'm starting to think that now I should really start focusing on tests. Um, even though I don't want to necessarily teach testing in this course, I just think for my own sanity, I need to be able to be, to be, uh, I need to, to know that this works because this is on GitHub. People can download this. I would hate for people to run this application and it just fall flat on its face because I've hadn't thought of some silly little thing. Um, and it wasn't captured by a test. So I think perhaps I'm going to write some tests, even basic sort of <coughs> acceptance tests would, uh, would would do just to make sure, you know, that, that I can run them and I can get to the page and I can get a 200 OK. Um, and, and, then, and then put potentially unit test um, the roots. And there's so much in here that, that, I mean, I don't like the name that processor. That doesn't, that doesn't do this justice. Um, I mean, that's so abstract. I, whenever I see a make function, I immediately think it needs to be a factory. And I guess that's what we're doing here is we are creating, um, we're, 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 we're abstracting the registration process via this make function. Um, and, and, and therefore we are, we are doing, I mean, this is a great example of encapsulation and polymorphism, um, because you, we're, we're passing in, uh, root data, um, no, we're not. We're passing in the roots that were built from the root data that we had previously. So the encapsulation level has already been up. Um, and then what we're doing is we're, we're, we're looping over the roots and then we are encapsulating the, uh, the root to the, to the, to the router, I should say, by registration. And then we're returning the whole router. So at this point where we are in, um, the kernel, we don't actually have um, any knowledge of the roots at all, you know, um, and that's the beauty of 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 doing it in a, in a poly polymorphic way. So we've we've completely hidden the the the, the business logic, the process, um, and I, and I like that. I like I like it when you get code down to like a couple of lines, um, where it's sort of masking the heavy lifting. That, that happens underneath. Um, however, you know, I don't like the name processor. I don't like the fact that um, there's duplication here. I think I'm going to refactor this a lot um, in the coming days. But for now, though, I think I'm going to end it there because it is kind of working. And I've just realized that the browser was on rather than the Twitch stream. <laughs> I will cut this. <laughs> I will cut this from uh, from the ha from the YouTube. <coughs> so yeah, what I'm saying is that. So um, yeah, uh, da -da 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 -da. I kind of I've kind of lost my trail. So I will be refactoring this a lot. I think I will be altering the code. Um, there's a lot of things I don't like the processor. I don't like, um, 
the duplication of code I don't like, the fact that I can't pass any parameters in I don't like. Um, so, yeah, I will be changing this, I think, um, offline, and I will be probably reporting back the changes that I've made. Um, <clears throat> but I think to to end with, I think, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a good... It's a good example of, um, in my opinion, of of encom encapsulation and, and and polymorphism here because um, we are uh, polymorphically registering the roots, building the roots up from the rooting file from uh, from here. Um, so we have an array of rooting. And so in the course, I can go into to depth about uh all of those good stuff so in the kernel here we're passing in um the roots that uh, we've generated from this config routing.php file uh, and we're making that like so um maybe this needs to be more of a factory method um and and done perhaps statically rather than um dynamically and this is this is you're then building the roots Looping through, this is a very pub sub, so you're registering the the root instance to the router, and then you're returning the router. Um, and then after that, you can then process the the whole thing. So you pass in the current URI, and then there you go. I think that's a that's a fairly decent example of um, uh, of that aspect of object orientation. Um, with that example, I can probably go into a, a little bit more detail. Um, there, there probably should be an interface here, um, especially if I was to think about maybe using other routing engines and sort of like passing in um, just the routing.php file. Um, and there's all sorts of things I need to do about the parameters and, and so forth. But uh, for now, I think uh, I shall leave that here. <laughs> but uh, yeah anyway guys uh, thank you and girls thank you ever so much for watching happy coding everyone and I'll uh, I'll see you again soon cheers bye <laughs>